The following program deals with a controversial, controversial subject. The theories expressed are not the only possible interpretation. The viewer is invited to make a judgment based on all available information.
the top talents in the comic book business, are here to tell everything they know. Welcome everybody to another Tuesday night. Hey, I want real quick. I want to let everybody know that unfortunately, uh, Jesse, our compadre, our partner in crime over here, the and third amigo, the third amigo, is out there. Uh, you know, lost in La Mancha in the wilds of Texas. Instead of fighting windmills, he's fighting oil mills, right? Oil refineries. So we're uh, we're giving our thoughts and prayers out to Jesse, who is lost in the wilds of Texas without a cell phone powered right now. He uh, unfortunately wasn't going to be able to make it tonight, and we found out very late. And because Marat and Bueller are both such good friends of Jesse. Also, uh, we wanted to wait because Jesse can't make it tonight. So we are rescheduling Marat and we are rescheduling Bueller uh, for tonight. So I apologize to everybody out there that was showing Bueller. up here, yeah, Bueller. to see those guys. Um, we will get them on here. Trust me. And uh, we we'll, we'll just we just want to do it in a better way. Dude, I'm, and I'm looking forward to it more than the chat. So yes. I'm just yeah, apologize for everybody, guys. Yeah. Um, you know. But um, we, you know, we didn't want to not have a show, um, especially with uh, recent events that have happened in the comic community. We definitely think we pro we need to talk. We definitely think we need to talk about the Ed Piscor suicide and uh, talk about that a little bit. We aren't going to get into uh, too much about the the cancel culture uh, part of it. We're going to do a separate special about cancel culture in the comic book community and in the comic book industry this Thursday. So uh, make sure you guys uh, put that on your list for Thursday night. Um, a special about cancel culture in the comic book industry. It's going to be very interesting, and we'll get into all that uh, for that episode. And of course, like I said, we'll have Bueller and Marat on when Jesse is here, you know, to enjoy it also, because that that that's part of the fun is to have the I told guys Brian, on. Uh, yeah. uh, well, we were planning tonight and uh, and unplanning tonight. I was like, wow, Brian, you picked the the two retailers who are constantly on the road. Uh, usually can't find Wi-Fi or good equipment uh, when they need it. Yes. Uh, good job, Brian. Good job. Well, hey, listen, everybody. I want to um, thank everybody for the constructive criticism, and thank you, everybody, that uh, also thought the interview was still good with uh, Dennis's Darth Vader uh, uh, breathing <laughs> apparatus. We fixed it, though. Let me tell you how in on making this show great dennis is dennis went out and spent 270 dollars on a professional shore mv7 microphone which i suggest to anybody out there that wants to do podcasting that is it this is the pro of pros for the cheapest that you can get and um hopefully it's going to fix everything he sounds great tonight and we're going to continue making this show as good as we can get we're gonna have the best visuals the best audio whatever we can do to make the show great for you guys we're gonna do so thank you guys for you know supporting us and you know being here for the show so um listen you guys this whole thing that has has unfolded with ed piscor and his suicide over the last week has been unbelievably painful for a lot of people and it's gonna be hard for a lot of those people over the next however many years it takes you know time they say time you know heals all wounds but i'm sorry uh these type of wounds are deep and i f i feel horrible for his family and but you know we f kind of feel like we had to talk about it so you know dennis is one well, of the guys that i really i want to i want to to, a lot of people don't know this about Dennis, but if you follow Dennis on Facebook and you follow his socials, one of the things that he's always been on top of is suicide prevention and, you know, talking about suicide. And uh, if you're feeling like it, it's an issue, you know, reach out to somebody, he's, you know, you're always dropping the suicide prevention hotline. You're always telling stories about, you know, suicide prevention and stuff, Dennis. And this, this really hit hard, man. This is, this is very, you know, uh, let me let me preface this, guys. Um, 
I only knew Ed Pisker from his work as a retailer buying his product. I always supported Hip Hop Family Tree. Uh, I bought lots of them for Free Comic Book Day. I, um, uh, I, I didn't love his art, but I understood where it was coming from and who it spoke to, and I respected that. Um, Red Room, I was like, I get where this is coming from. I'm a huge pulp underground plog fan. I'm like, okay, this speaks to a certain subset of the industry. I'll support this guy. Um, I, I honestly have never watched a single episode of comic kayfab. Cartoonist kayfabe, kayfabe. yeah. Cart- cartoonist kayfabe. I've never watched an episode of it. It didn't. It didn't make my YouTube algorithms. It never made me click. So I had no idea who this guy was. Um, and a week ago, I just started seeing it was Pisker, 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 Pisker. And I was like, okay. Um, and I looked at kind of a 10,000 foot view of it. And I'm like, look, this is not for me to to chime in for right now. Um, ironically, I was on a trip with my daughter and her friends to Chicago, who are roughly in that same age group group and I probably would might have had a different opinion um, but I said look this these kind of things you got to let breathe um, you got to let all the the facts start coming out <clears throat> and unfortunately um, it, it culminated in one week of hell for him and uh, he took a different road than I would have liked to have seen a person I barely knew uh, take yeah yeah, it I mean, was... I I kind of feel that, you know, in this world of uh, Facebook, social media, et cetera. I mean, I have four thousand Facebook friends. I know a couple hundred of them personally. Um, uh, I've talked to a lot of people um, about their problems. I had I I've had retailers message me in the middle of the night, two in the morning, and they're like. Dennis, man, I, I'm sorry to reach out to you right now, but you know this is tough, and 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 listening to you talk about the industry really helps me kind of compartmentalize the problems I'm going vent. through. Vent, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you 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 need to have people to vent with and yeah. and to you know to to talk to. I got to talk about something. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of things with this with tonight's episode uh, about this. Uh, we're going to try and keep the. Con, you know the count the cancel culture stuff um to thursday's show but there's yeah. a lot to talk about tonight and this is this is more about self-help this is more about healing um and if and just kind of being there for the community um the comic book industry that's what this show is about is is enlightening the industry of comics and it doesn't mean just giving you sound advice or or your hot take on something it's about being there and i live by example i've tried to be there for my fellow retailers um all during the pandemic four years ago and i've shared some of these on my facebook page um i was doing i was doing facebook live videos with my phone like this going that's that's the person I'm talking to, and that's that's me. And I didn't mm. know how to use StreamYard, but I felt like the industry was hurting at that point, and I I needed to help be a voice to talk people through it from my unique perspective. Um, and and that's what I did, and I share it all the time, man. If if you know who I am, or you're friends with me on Facebook or Instagram. And you are in a situation, there's, there's very few situations that I'm not going to try to help you with. Um, uh, you know, with that being said, there's definitely things that are across my line. Um, but Well, that's a big uh, part of this I, I, that, that I want to yeah. talk about because, you know, there's been a lot of allegations out there that people are throwing around after this. And there's been a lot of uh, people saying things. And I, and I, and we, I see this a lot, and I want to respond to it. Uh, for example, you know, we talked about this whole Ed Piscor drama on uh, Drama Alert on Saturday night, right? And I am getting a lot of pushback on that right now. I'm getting a, a lot of people who are basically, you know, uh, saying, you know, it was it was okay for you to to talk about this on Drama Alert and push this. 
um, comments, for instance, uh, that say, you know, comic drama sucks, you guys do it for the clicks, and now one of the targets of your segment killed himself because of the rampant speculation surrounding him. The show was better before, better before you guys got wrapped up in the garbage. Do better. Another one. Man, I really loved everything you guys did, but I completely stopped watching your YouTube stuff when that you started the drama alert section in the shows. That might bring some easy clicks, but I never wanted to support those witch hunts. If you remember Acetate Gate, that could have ended very wrong. My problem with this, you guys, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you follow me, if you followed me on any content creation that I've ever done uh, for a regular basis, you should, you should understand, I, I don't f feel like you would write these type of things because I've always stood firm on the fact that there's room for forgiveness for just about anyone, okay? And, no, absolutely. And, and drama alert segment was always about bringing up the current drama that's going on in the community and not just to cancel somebody but to find out whether it's whether it's worthy of talking about is this person really doing wrong is this person really need to be shamed in the public and i'm sorry you guys there are some things in life that still deserve public shaming but nothing does nothing public shaming being called names nothing should constitute you taking your life well and and, and go oh, ahead sorry go ahead finish no finish your thought Brian. It, 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 and i've always said that there's room for forgiveness and second of all and most important i believe if you go and watch that drama alert segment one of the things that i i said was this guy doesn't deserve to be canceled this guy deserves to be kind of brought out and said and, and made fun of a little bit i'm sorry you guys what there's 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 no reason that any 40 38 35 29 30 year old man should be setting themselves up for this type of thing there are a right. lot of people out there that will take advantage of situations like that look at what's going on in the world of the music right now with p diddy putting people in these situations well, to take advantage of them there are people that are looking to do this. Why set yourself up for it? And a little public shaming is okay in this world. It doesn't constitute somebody taking their life. And it's well, very, and very I, sad. And I, I've been thinking about one person. And actually, just while we were having this conversation, a second person popped up in my brain. Um, let he who does not love Parks and Rec throw the first stone because the, one of the stars of Parks and Rec, Rob Lowe, uh, did way worse much longer ago. And he, um, if you don't know, I'll, I'll just give you the overview. In 1988 at the uh, Democratic National Convention, Rob Lowe had a camcorder, uh, an early probably uh, big shoulder mounted thing. And he filmed himself with a 16 year old girl doing what you would do in a hotel room at a big convention and the tape got leaked and he had his come to jesus moment um, he got canceled in he the, says in that's the hollywood what, community yep yep i mean he was he was as ostracized as you could be for what he got caught doing um he sobered up he found a woman that he's been married to ever since. I think 1992, he ended up getting said, married. Said he made a mistake, came came out and said he made a mistake. Again, there's room for forgive. That's what being human is about, is, is, yeah. is forgiving forgiveness. I mean, that is well, the, the biggest tenet in, in a, a, a community is love and forgiveness. Um, so many people talk about, you know, they're, they're Christians and this and that, and it's very easy for them to throw blame on people. And here's the other thing, Dennis, that you brought up that's very in that's very interesting. We don't know Ed Piscor. You know, his if no. you want to blame somebody, like blame his friends. Like where, you know, reading one of the things that really broke my freaking heart was reading the suicide letter, and in the moment when he says to Jim Rugg, "Hey, that J Jim, you that one hurt, brother." That one hurt. Yeah. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, Jim Rugg was and his best friend, his his compadre. Do you know what I got out of that, Brian? He forgave Jim at he that point. He forgave Jim. Yeah, he did. 
He did. Because still, the rest of everything is like, Jim, please share this. Jim, please yeah. keep the, the channel open. Jim, you know, he doesn't say, you know, Jim, you betrayed me. I, that was my first take before I got that le- part of the letter was this is all because of Jim turning his back on him publicly. And it was it was me just kind of dissecting his letter. I realized he knew what Jim did. It definitely hurt him. But I think inevitably he forgave Jim in that letter, but he did not forgive the other people. Well, and then we'll get into that big time. Yeah. But I, I want to talk about Jim real quick because... Well, I wanted to mention the other person. Okay, quick. go I'm ahead. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. We have spent the last 15 years celebrating this man. This man has, I think, one of... And, and Brian, if you can find it, that um, the speech he gives when he accepted that award with uh, Mel Gibson behind him. Oh, yeah, Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey yeah. Jr. We have all been a part. If, you're, if you love comics and you love comic book movies... We have all been a part of one of the greatest forgiveness and comeback stories in the history of entertainment. Uh, he just won the Oscar. Um, this is a man who got really wasted one night and woke up in a nine-year-old's bed in a house he didn't live in. Uh, he was found with a bag of cocaine and a hooker and a Wonder Woman costume in some foreign hotel or, you know, some... some uh, out of state hotel. Uh, this man did a lot of crazy shit that we all saw firsthand. And Mel Gibson, a man who would later need the same forgiveness himself, uh, took Robert Downey Jr. in and helped bring him back. And we're all thankful for that. Now, this yeah. one. Let's go ahead and Can we just play watch this. this? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. He told actually I asked Mel to present uh, this award to me for a reason because when I couldn't get sober he told me not to give up hope and he urged me to find my faith didn't have to be his or anyone else's as long as it was rooted in forgiveness and I couldn't get hired so he cast me in the lead of a movie that was actually developed for him and he kept a roof over my head, and he kept food on the table. And most importantly, he said that if I accepted responsibility for my wrongdoings, and if I embraced that part of my soul that was ugly, uh, hugging the cactus, he calls it, he said that if I hugged the cactus long enough, I'd become a man of some humility, and that my life would take on a new meaning. And I did, and it worked. Um, all he asked in return was that uh, someday I help the next guy in some small way. Uh, it's reasonable to assume that at the time he didn't imagine the next guy would be him. <laughs> or that someday was tonight. So anyway, on this special occasion and in light of the recent holidays, including Columbus Day, I humbly ask that you join me, unless you are completely without sin, in which case you picked the wrong industry. So you guys get the picture there. Um, and another thing that I want to talk about that in line with this, and I've talked about yeah, this I a lot. Just, I just wanted to bring up those two topics yeah. because those two people have yeah. hit a lower spot than where I think Ed was yeah. pinned to, yeah. and they both asked for forgiveness made you know atones to their sins or however you want to say it i'm not that much of a religious guy but the the yeah. sentiment is the same and uh we celebrate them now and i think ed if he had had that opportunity if he had had that person help him hug the cactus i think we might be in a different place tonight well he also listen we all know there's no doubt that there's Nothing is black and white in this world. Anybody who thinks that, that there's black that, that it's black and white in this world and that there's no nuance, there's no gray area, is in a different reality. And there are many things that led to this. Depression is being is one of them. That's a huge thing. And we all know depression is real. I mean, we all know depression is real. We all deal with depression in different ways. Here's another thing. We all have things in our past that may be construed as uh, shameful, right? 
Some of us talk about it. Some, some of us don't. I'm very open with, with my shameful past. I was a heroin addict that stole from people to get high, you know, for years. I, I lived on, the, uh, on, on streets for times and, and, de- and did things that I, I said I would never do. You know, I would never do. I remember being a kid saying, I would never do something like this. There are things that we have all done in our past that are, that are, you know, we don't want other people to talk about in in that way. But we have to be able to say, hey, I've learned from it. I'm a better person. It happened. And here's the other thing. I would rather go into war with 10 former heroin addicts like me that have beat it and that have said that I've done fucked up things in the past, but I know I can get past it and I know I can be a better person than somebody who's never touched a drug or done something wrong in their life. I want to be with those people. I want to be with the people that have beat something and that have gotten over some shame and gotten over some, some bad times in their life. That's the other thing. It's it's a horrible, it's a horrible analogy to, throw up in these last couple days but that which does not kill you only makes you stronger yes yeah Yeah. um and and here's the other thing you know that chick that that did this there's a lot of blame that needs to be thrown on her because there you you can't there was nothing proved here ed piscor he deserves some shame for being an idiot for talking to a young girl a, a girl who is you know, not in the age range of what current society deems as okay, which is a big part of the world we live in, especially well, today with and, the internet, you know. And, I mean, things being said, uh, Kevin Spacey has almost been completely forgiven of worse with younger. Um, just because it's the same sex instead of an, a different, uh, you know, uh, uh, an alternate yeah. sex. You know, there there's just so many things that you can you can get into these the the little minutiae of this, but I'll I'll just say this: even if her allegations were true of everything that she alleged, it was not illegal in the state of Pennsylvania. There was going to never be a perp walk other than public opinion against him. He could have overcome a bad public opinion of making a stupid mistake. Yeah. But, but there was a couple of things that put him over the edge, man. And yeah, this industry didn't have his back and didn't say innocent till proven guilty. And that's the other uh, the YouTube thing. community. I'm not saying, I'm not saying the YouTube community did this. I'm not, I'm not saying any of that, but I was looking and I didn't see too many of the, Let's give let's give Ed a chance to respond. I didn't see that. Well, listen. There's a difference between a little public shaming, especially in the world we live in nowadays with social media, YouTube. I mean, he's he took part in that. Let's not forget mm-hmm. that, you guys. Ed Piscor took part in the Whisper Network. And if you guys don't believe that the Whisper Network is true, come join us on Thursday and you'll find out it's true. Even yeah. Ed Piscor and his suicide note called it out, and you know yeah. he was part of that. And they turned well, and on him. Well, he was him. part of a lot of other cancellations that I'm sure he felt good about. Yeah, and at the time. when this there's live a by difference. The sword, die by the sword. There's a difference between cancellation and and going after a person's life and ruining their life, going after their art gallery and telling their art gallery, contacting all their people who they make money through, they have contacts to, for publishing stuff, contacting them, contacting everybody in their in their world and shutting down their life. There's a difference between that, the cancel network, and calling somebody out for being an idiot talking to a young girl. That yeah. is what we also have to remember. So for anybody out there that wants to go put any sort of blame on anybody that was calling him out for that, I'm sorry, but you need to think, overthink that. There no. is nothing wrong in this world with some public shaming. There's a difference between well, and public shaming and can you cancellation. Pull up, can you pull up Redefining Retro's comment? Because that's that was the damning one, and I think he, he fully addressed it there. 
that local news station doxed his parents, his yeah. elderly parents. That was fucked. Yeah. 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 And I mean, you know, if you can't get him, you're going to go after his parents and his parents. He probably didn't even tell his parents that this was going on. So this is how, That's they, how they found, found out. out about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, dude, that could have killed his parents. You know, where I, mean, where, I don't know where's this where's this re- redefining uh, retro? Is it on Twitter? Redefining retro. Also, f that local news station that was effing worse. It might have. Oh, it's, right here. It's on my comments. Yeah, here. yeah, in, yeah. Redefining retro says, um, where is it? It's about four comments up, unless it got deleted. Yeah, he said, uh, y'all the only ones who said blame to blame both parties, which is correct. Nobody expected Ed to kill himself, which makes everyone who talked about it online feel shitty. Um, yeah, man, he's he's got... He, so, um, Brian, Brian says, never heard of the Whisper Network until the other day. Um, I was on a... I believe it was uh, an Ethan Van Skyver podcast. There's about nine or six... And it was the night that the Whisper Network broke. And several of the people in that Whisper Network I had. And actually, I think I'm going to I'm going to tell this story tonight, Brian. Um, okay. I didn't even warn you about this. So one of the people in the Whisper Network, um, and I can't remember who it was against when that story broke. Um, and I believe it was in Bounding Into Comics. They're the ones that broke the story into the Whisper Network. Because they had somebody called Penny Parker in, yeah, the, Penny Parker. in the Whisper Network. Yeah, and she wrote the book. And she wrote, yeah, she she's the one that told all the dirty laundry. One of the people in that Whisper Network was at my convention in 2012 or 13. I think it was 13. Um, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, I think it was 13. And we had an incident. Um, we had we had a very structured security situation, and we had a very famous artist um, get accused of sexual improprieties with one of my crew members that I knew very well. Um, we didn't know how to handle it. Um, we called it a code pink. We had a security with a code pink. Um, when we called that, all of the heads of the convention and all of the security people would, can, you know, come together. We would figure out how to handle it. And one of the members of that Whisper Network, one of the people that got listed, I think, in Ed's letter, a famous comic journalist. Um, she's a writer for one of the big comic bloggers, blogs. Uh, we asked her. She was kind of the most progressive um, feminist female defender at the convention, and I and I knew her. I knew her and her boyfriend. Um, and I asked her, and she said, and I quote, "Oh, he was probably mm, yeah. You you highlighted it. Um, oh, he was probably a little too drunk. I say we just let this pass." And if she wasn't friends with him and didn't know him or he thought differently than her on a couple different political ideologies, would that have turned into a, no, call the police immediately, have him arrested for this. Yeah. Um, And every time I see her name pop up on one of these whisper networks or one of these cancel mobs, these cancel pigs, uh, I just remember back to that moment of of me and her talking in the hallway with I think two other of my security, you know, my uh, show promoters. Yeah, where she told us to look the other way over a clear sexual assault on one of my staff members. Um, we talked to that staff member. We made sure that she was taken care of, and and we asked the guy to leave his hotel room and leave the convention. Um, I won't say the name of it because I don't want to get accused of anything, but it's past the statute of limitations, etc. Um, if I'm ever questioned about it, if she ever denies it, I will mention it so that she knows very well that we know what she told us to do. And we followed her directive. 
And I, I think about that quite often and think, man, I was wrong for listening to her when I see all of the people that she has tried to rub out like a cigarette on the sidewalk. Yeah. So for those of you guys that don't know what the Whisper Network is, back in uh, 2017 or 2016, I would say, uh, it's been about seven, eight years now, um, a bunch of uh, basically uh, people in the comic book industry, uh, people that, you know, uh, several voices in the comic book industry, um, called out creators for their political support of a politician, we'll just say. You guys know who it is. And that basically turned into um, a the cancellation network, or the Whisper Network, as they call it in comics. And they call it the Whisper Network because it's all whispered behind the scenes until they decide to come out and cancel somebody. And when they cancel somebody, canceling somebody, you guys, isn't just talking bad about them on the internet or, or you know, making fun of somebody. It's going to their kids' schools and complaining to their teachers and their principals, going to their art gallery and telling their art gallery that you're a creep and you shouldn't, you, you shouldn't be, the art gallery shouldn't do business with you, calling your, your businesses or anybody that does, that you make money with and telling them that you're a creep. And not just doing it once or twice or three times, doing it every day for months until yeah, those people like deal fold, with it. Yeah. Ten, ten people at every one of those levels Your constantly bank, yes. barraging from every front. And um, the same you know, people... I think the most famous, the most famous is uh, Mark Wade when he contacted yes. Antarctic Press to try to cancel Richard C. Meyer's book deal with him. Yeah. So Penny and Parker... Is the yeah. is the uh, writer who created a book called The Whisper Network, um, and she wrote a book about it. And here are the people that she calls out in in her w Whisper Network, or the twelve people that she calls out: Rich Johnson of Bleeding Cool, Alex DeCampi, Caitlin Booth, Joe Glass, Caitlin Roseberg, Graham McMillan, Heidi McDonald, Asher Elbin, Tess Fowler, Chris Arendt, Heather Antos, Stephanie Cook. This was originally back in twenty twenty one. And there's even more creators who have been added to that. Uh, you know, uh, Gail well, Simone tell, can and I give Kelly. You a little, can I give you a little background on that? Yeah, K Gail Simone uh, and Kelly Sue DeConnick have well, been. Three of those, three of those people, those twelve, used to call me a good friend. There we go. And 2016 changed all of that. Yeah. Yep. Um, to the point where I don't think, and actually, the Whisper Network. It's kind of funny. Also has shills in the uh I'll, I'll, I'll tell this one too we used to have a um a facebook group of conservatives and i remember sharing a a screen capture with the discussion with uh, a a one-on-one -on -one discussion with somebody on that list in that conservative group and I immediately, within an hour, got a message from that friend saying, I know you shared a private message between us, blah, 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 and just went off on me. I'm like, well, you're wrong, and that's why I shared it. Um, and so it, it, it's, it's a very highly skilled escalation. Um, you know, Penny Parker's in their Whisper Network. They had somebody in our Whisper Network. We had a lot of... Uh, loose lips sink ships. We canceled that one and started a new one that still goes on today, but I'm never going to mention where it's at. Two um, people that um, Ed named are these two people right here, Ramon Villalobos and Alex DeCampi. A lot of people I had, have... I had dinner with Ramon Villalobos at a retailer's uh, summit. Yeah. Yeah? You know, I, I just... I think that there's a lot to talk about in this whole situation. And a lot of people are like, I don't think you should talk about it. 
you know, if you, it's not some, I'm sorry, you guys. I think that these are the type of things, this gives me a reason to talk about it. Like, if this is a big, the biggest news in comic books it, right now, and I, it needs I to be talked so about. I felt so strongly about it that, Brian, uh, you know, when we first had our first phone call about midday after the news had broke about tonight's episode, uh, we were of the mind that we have to discuss this. We have to, it's, it's an 800 pound elephant or gorilla in the room. Um, we can't not discuss it, but we can definitely discuss it in modesty and then discuss it later. You know, we didn't want to bring down our guests with that, but the second we had to, to postpone the guests and yeah. reschedule them, Brian yeah. and I said, we really need to just have this full conversation, uh, tonight. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I'm, I, listen, you guys, when it comes to this show, and I talk about it a lot because it, it needs to be stated, when it comes to this show in the industry of comics, I know nothing. I am such a newbie in this. I'm the guy that's on the show to push the buttons and to ask the stupid questions, right? I don't know this stuff. But the amount of people in the industry who are coming out to say this is wrong and this needs to stop is crazy. And... I, I I just when so when let me let me go through here's the problem Brian not only have I been around long enough but it's almost impossible for me to forget these things and let me just bring up a couple of the big ones that have happened in just the 18 19 years that yeah yesterday was my or two days ago was my 19th anniversary of opening my store grand opening and yesterday was the uh, two-year anniversary of reopening Wonder World with the new, new concept. But in that time, I remember actually one one of the people on that list um, accused Brian Wood of DMZ fame, and you know I I never liked him. Uh, he was kind of a as a comic creator, he was always just whiny and preachy to retailers. Who who are you talking about? Oh, Brian Wood. Brian yeah. Wood. Yeah, 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 yeah. DMZ Brian Wood. Yeah, and uh, he was he was bitching to not retailers. simple man. Yeah, not simple man. Everybody, Brian Wood, the, no, the no, comic no. writer. Sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, he got it called out for inviting comic cr creator women he met at the bar. Do you have it? Um, I don't, it probably won't be it on. I don't know. I don't think they would put the controversy in there. Yeah, I'm sure they would. Yeah, demo. Yeah, I'm sure they would. I'm sure that, that somebody's just dying to get any of the con controversy they can on this stuff. You know, well, and, we and I'm not trying to on cancel November, Brian Wood. Oh, yeah, there it yeah, is. Yeah, there, it, there is. it is. Yeah, so you guys can go read it. and, But, you know. Tess Fowler, one of the members of that Whisper Network, um, it, it got she dropped it in the mid on Twitter. Um I guess it's uh, just read that real quick. This is since Brian discussed it on Twitter. I guess it's okay for me to mention. After reaching out to him, I did get a very specific apology. He said it was not for publication, and so I don't, I didn't, because I wanted him to feel safe enough to go further. I feel it's necessary to openly acknowledge this for the sake of all women talking about their own experiences right now. To me, what he accepted ownership of felt genuine. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, no, but I'll, I'll just give you the background. Uh -huh. um, Brian uh, fancied Tess. Uh, he saw her at a bar. He said, hey, I'd love to work with you. Why don't you bring your portfolio up to my hotel room? Very Harvey Weinstein-esque. And uh, made a pass at her, I believe. I'm I, I, Allegedly. Um, just to cover our asses. And there was a very widespread pre-Me Too... A cancellation attempt on Brian Wood. Um, he buckled down. He weathered the storm. I don't know if he still. I know he's released a few things. I think uh, God, I remember there was the massive, and I read it. I read the first issue when we got it into the store, and I'm like, oh my God, this book is horrible. Um, uh, well, he had. Here's the thing. He. There are certain people who travel in certain circles, and if you don't apologize, you're going to get wailed on even harder. But if you do apologize, you'll be forgiven and, and brought back in and allowed to keep working. Um, I was, I still consider myself a friend of Scott Ali's um, at Dark Horse. He's one of the best editors Dark Horse ever had. 
when he got drunk, he would kind of be crazy. I was just as drunk as him. I didn't have a public um, statement about his cancellation because I was usually I bought him the drinks. He'd buy me the drinks. We were good drinking buddies. Never had. I never saw him do anything bad. But a lot of people definitely said he did some bad stuff. Um, you know, we lost Scott Ali from the industry. I don't know if he's still working. You know, let, once again, when, when these people disappear, they disappear. If they're still working, you, you don't find out about it until something else happens. Uh, the biggest one, and it definitely came from the Whisper Network. Um, I remember this one. This is the biggest one, was Warren Ellis. And the stuff they were bringing up for Warren Ellis was absolutely just, it was after Me Too had hit, and they kind of thought they needed to take down a big, big, big name. And Warren Ellis was it. And they all came out of the woodwork from the Whisper Network. Um, oh, he promised me work. Well, yeah, but you you, you got the work and, and he just happened to also, you know, there it was women that were throwing themselves at Warren Ellis because he was Warren Ellis. And then, I, I, I don't remember how it all happened, but it seemed like this was the one that I could not support, the cancellation I could not support. And it just seemed like all the same people were piling on. It's like I don't support so any dist- cancellation. I don't support any no, cancellation. No, no, I, I am, no, no, I am, no, absolutely. Even the Brian Wood thing. I mean, none of it. Dude, I don't I've support been, cancellation. I've hooked up at conventions. I've hooked up at conventions. You know, it's it's one of the things you do. It's why you go to the bar. Oh, hey, it's what adults you know, do. I, yes. Yeah, um, I just think that there was a certain a certain level where. It didn't matter if it was consensual. It didn't matter if it was this. If you had one ounce of power over somebody else, you were wrong for doing it. And I just didn't see. And that, that's. Uh, Neptune Arts is, is having a field day with the Whisper Networks. Uh, yeah. We don't. It, you have like minded groups. We all have Discord servers. If um, Facebook groups. If the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we all have them. Group chats. Um, if you want to call them Whisper Networks, you, you can call them that. Um, yeah, that's that's, what that's not Penny what we're Parker talking about. That yeah. One. yeah, no, I we're don't think we We're talking about ever, a uh, group of people that have been part of this cancel culture in the comics books community itself, right? I mean, this happens in multiple other places, but the one, but what we're talking about here is what's going on in the comic book industry and the comic book community. There is a group of people that are searching, they're constantly searching for people to do this to. And here's the other thing. When I found out that, when I saw the message from Jim Rugg, um, let me see if I can bring this up. Yeah, tell this story. Tell this story. So... If you guys didn't see the message to Jim Rugg, to Ed Piss that uh, that Jim Rugg put out, this is probably the most heartbreaking part. So this was didn't a they co- do like a thousand episodes together? Or something they were best ridiculous? friends. They did a thousand, like a, uh, so many episodes of Cartoonist Kayfabe. They did books together. They worked on books together. They did Red Rum together. Like they were they. I look at them the way like I look at my relationship with my best friend Keith right who I do the podcast with I saw we you know we talked about uh we didn't talk about the Ed Piscor stuff until about a week after it came out right because I didn't want to say anything until we had a little bit more right and and this came out a few days before he killed himself and this is Jim Rugg he posted this on his social medias in light of this past week's shocking revelations, I find it necessary to reevaluate my professional associations to ensure they align with my values of respect and integrity. Therefore, I have ended my working relationship with Ed Piscor. Now, do you let know me what's missing you, from that, Brian? Can I can I pause you for a second? Yeah. He says it in the thing, but he doesn't say the second part out loud. To reevaluate my professional association, he doesn't say but Ed is still my friend. Friend. And I will not man. condemn him. Yes. 
That's what he, he should have said. He that. shouldn't have put out this. That, that he should have said, Jim Rugg has been my best friend since I can remember. He is still my best friend, and I will support him until it shows otherwise. Until until otherwise, and I support him now. There, you know, I feel like he, did he go to Jim and talk to Jim? You know, this is the, and, and you know when Jim when, Jim, when Jim did come over to him in, in the suicide letter. Yeah, he says Jim came over and gave him a big hug. I don't know if that was before or after this statement. He says so, Jim brought me soup. Yeah. He, he re mentions that Jim bringing soup was so, very important to him. So here's when Ed when Ed put out. I woke up that morning early. Um, I had a vet appointment, so I woke up early. And as soon as I woke up, I saw Ethan <laughs> was going live, and he had a big, huge thing yeah. that said, "Not an April Fool's." Ed Piscor suicide note, and he was just starting. So Ethan's reading the suicide note, and there's a, mo a moment when he reads the part about Jim Rugg where he says to Jim Rugg, you know, Jim, that one hurt, brother. And as soon as, and that makes me almost cry when I say that, as soon as that he said that and I heard that, I, I stopped the video and I called my best friend. And I said to him, I said, hey, man, I got to talk to you about this. This shit's crazy. And I need you to know, like, I would never do this to you. Um, you know, I, I, I know you don't think I would do that to you, but I just need to tell you this. Like, this isn't something that brothers do, that people that care about each other do. Um, and again, this is how, I don't know if, if, uh, if it's soft or how fast people are to not care or if this is what, you know, cancel culture has brought. But my best friend, after we both kind of, you know, hugged it out on, on the phone and talked about how much we care about each other and shit, and how, you know, and how shitty this is, we also talked about how, you know, Jim was part of this cancel culture. And this cancel culture will eat itself alive. They will eat each other. They it's will turn on each other. Take. Yeah, they will turn on each other the second they have a chance. And that is is not something to be proud about. These people are proud about canceling no. people. Yeah. And, uh, and let me, can I just say this too? And, and this is my hot take. Like I said, I, I hadn't heard Jim Rugg's name until Ethan read that in the suicide note. I didn't even know who the other half of a show I never watched was. I only knew Ed Pisker because I supported his work as a retailer. And I, if I saw his name, I knew exactly how many of those I could probably sell. Um, I, I would honestly say that without Ed, I don't know that Jim has a career outside of working with Ed. He might not I mean, that's now. a mean thing to say. Huh? He might not now. I mean, I, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to have disdain for him. But I mean, everything, when I, when I looked his name up, and I, I always look it up, I, uh, one of the things I always check is eBay, because I want to see how relevant this is. I want to see what this event does to the market. Jim Rugg's name is so essentially connected to everything Ed Pisker did that I just, at a certain point, it's like, what, what career did you think you were going to have to protect from getting canceled that you couldn't also say, I've ended my working relationship with Ed Pisker, but he is still my friend and, and my I love best him. friend. Yes. And I love him, and I hope he gets the help he needs. And, and anybody, I will be one of those people giving it to him. Yeah, and anybody throwing out any sort of blame on anybody that talked about this and that talked about it on YouTube and talked about it on the internet, listen, this is something that Ed did against other people. Gotta, this is part of being in a society, in a community, there's always going to be place and places where we need to publicly shame somebody. They learn from it. It doesn't mean that they take their life. It doesn't mean that they ruin their life. We tell them and we show them in a way that this is not accepted. And then we help them dust off the dirt and say, okay, now we show everybody that you're going to be better. And if they keep doing it, then we figure out a way to, ch to, to figure it out then. Everything is gray. Everything is nuanced. There are, all, there are different situations for everything. Nothing in this world is black and white. And there is nothing in this world 
that I can think of in this in the world that we live in right now and the situation that we live in in this country and how good we have it for a reason for taking your life, especially when you have people out there who care for you, especially people like Ed Piscor, who is on YouTube, who has tons of people that care for him. It's really sad yeah. that this happened. and But, you know, you guys, this is something that we have to talk about as a comic book community, as a society. Have you thrown up the suicide prevention number yet, Brian? Uh, yes, I put it in the in the description. Um, okay. But if, if you guys uh, don't know the uh, suicide hotline, there is a suicide hotline, 988. And, and I'm just... I'm just asking everybody, uh, uh, Brian, go ahead and give it real quick, and then I'll... Yeah, so the the suicide hotline, 988, is the suicide and crisis lifeline. Um, listen, you guys, I've seen Dennis on his mo social media say, if you have his number, reach out to him. If you have his yeah. uh, Instagram thing, reach out to him. It's, I've, it's had, bullshit, I've had, it's... I've had uh, viewers reach out to me when they've been going through shit. And you know what, man? Here's what I will say. If you're going through something and you have people that you consider close friends, reach out to them. If you consider somebody a friend, a close friend, reach out to them. Talk to them. Every, especially men. Especially men. Because I'm, I'm going to talk about how uh, taking it from a man's point of view, because I'm not a woman, obviously. But I want to take, I want to say as being a man, we have to have other men that we can reach out to as friends and say, hey, man, I'm going through something. That we can, And we trust it's, those people it's not enough. Easy. Yes, we trust those people enough easy. to take their response. Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell the story I told you, Brian. Um, and and this, is, this is one of those, those moments, man. So I'm with my kids and my business partner, and we just went to the grocery store to pick up some groceries. Um, and I saw this kid tweaking out. He was kind of, he's just a little shady. You know, he had a big jacket on and he was just kind of staring at me and staring at my kids. And I'm like, okay, this is getting a little and aisle to aisle, like three aisles. And I'm like, that guy's still still staring at us. Uh, Bob, just keep the kids safe over here. I'm going to go figure out what the hell's going on. And I walk up to the guy and, and you can tell he's kind of twitching and sweating. And I'm like, uh, and it was kind of cold out. So that was a little odd. And I said... Can I help you? I was bigger than the guy. I was twice the size of him. I wasn't worried. Um, he's like, are you the cops? I'm like, what? Are, are, are you here to arrest me? And I'm like, okay, we have. I'm like, hey, let's, let's go talk. Let's go outside. Let's have a smoke. And uh, I gave him one of my cigarettes. We sat out on the bench in front of Kroger's. Um. And the guy's telling me he, he thinks his girlfriend's cheating on him and he wants to get his gun and, and take her and him. And I'm like, bro, this is not, I mean, it, I, I, I don't know. I didn't see a soul crying out for help. I saw a weirdo staring at me and my kids. But the second you started hearing this guy, I realized this is a soul crying out for help. And if you have a soul, you recognize that. And I had three or four cigarettes with this guy, easily 30 minutes. Bob was with my kids finishing up, and, and I'm like, just, just go to the car. I'll, I'll take the kids to the car, and I'll be with you as soon as we're done here. And uh, during that time, man, I, I'm talking. I'm like, bro, this is all in your head, man. This is you. You got to get this. You, there's something going on with you, man, and, and I can't help you. I'm not the... I'm not a trained psychologist. I tell people that all the time. This is beyond me. But I said to the guy, I go, you got your car here? He goes, yeah. I go, right up this road is the hospital. I, I really need you to go drive straight to that hospital, walk right up to the emergency room. I gave him my business card. I said, if they have any questions, have them call me. And... He messaged me. I, I found it. He told me his name and I found him on Facebook. I'm not going to share his name. And he messaged me like two days later and thanked me. He was like, man, I, I just want to thank you. Uh, I was thinking some really crazy stuff and you took the time to talk to me. Dude, that was a 
guy I've never seen since. Only seen that time. It took 30 minutes out of my life to save his life and to possibly save his girlfriend's life. Um, that's that's what we do. It, it yeah. doesn't, if, if Ed Pisker just picked my name out of a phone book and called me up, like I said, never, never socially interacted with him, never met him at a convention that I can remember, et cetera. I, I would have talked to the guy. I'll talk to any of you guys listening. If you have a problem, dude, I'm not, ju- I'm not going to judge you. Uh, you know, I'm going to tell you, Hey man, this is beyond. If, if it gets to a point where it's beyond me and I know when it's beyond me, I'm going to say, Hey, call these people, call this number. Call whoever it is that you're angry at and just say, Hey man, we gotta, we gotta end this. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'll talk to you. Cause it's, it's worth my soul is open enough that I can share it with somebody who's hurting. That's just, that's just where, where I'm at in my life. Yeah. And, and listen, I keep seeing people saying, oh, but it's okay to, to laugh and shame him. Listen, we're not living in the world that a lot of us grew up in. We're not living in a world where we all go to church and that's our community place on Sunday. And we're not living in a world where our, our neighborhood gets together and goes plays football on the weekend. We're in a world or shut down now, the streets and have a barbecue. Yeah. Or, or, you know, I remember growing up and my dad and all the dads in the ne- neighborhood would all hang out at, at the neighbor's house because the neighbor had a kegerator in his front porch. And they would all hang out and they would fill that kegerator together. And while we were out in the street playing, they would all hang out together and shoot the shit. And that doesn't happen anymore. Our, most of our neighbors, we don't know each other's names. No. We live in a world where our socialization happens on this right here. We live in a world of Twitter, X, Instagram, short little pulses, quick little hits, and we're not going to stop that. We're not going to change that. So, listen, um, uh, race, ending racism, ending homophobia, ending suicide, all that stuff is a shining star that we can achieve, try to achieve and it can be our beacon but it's never going to end completely I, and I, I almost Brian we have a hundred people watching this right now I honestly think I probably know at least 10 of the people in the chat better than I know my neighbor on the other side I know two of my neighbors actually my daughter knows a third one because her friend lives over there but I mean that's the that's the world we're in. Yeah, yeah, it, we are in this world, and here's the other thing. There is, and, and I don't want to associate so so I don't want to associate uh, softness and me calling Ed Piscor soft for taking his life because I, please don't think that, but there is. This feeling that that I have and a lot of other people have, and that I that I see that we're becoming a society that can't handle the smallest pushback in any way in our lives. We can't handle somebody not agreeing with us without getting into an argument. We can't handle somebody not agreeing with a, th- some of the simplest things in life without getting in a he said she said. Oh, you're a bad what's, person. What's this we pilgrim? Yeah, I, I, I'm. At, at my age, I'm well used to people telling me I'm an asshole and agreeing with them. Yeah, and I, I just, I don't know. I, I think that this is, uh, anytime this happens, it's going to be a reason to talk about this. And I'm always going to, yeah. uh, that's why I started this platform. That's why, one of the reasons I started this platform is so we can have conversations about it. Conversations are the, are the most important thing. If we don't have the conversations, I need these conversations so I can figure out what I think in life, right? Without these conversations, without hearing other people's points of view, without ta- having these conversations uh, in, in a constructive way, how are we supposed to figure things out in life, right? I'm not going to figure things yeah. out just by doing, you know, I need to see, well, example, I mean, talk to people. And, and sadly, we, we've grown up on this. Um, you know, we 
we grew up in a world where we drank out of garden hoses. I know that's the the whole Gen X laugh joke, you know. We grew up drinking out of garden hoses, and our parents told us to be home before the lights went on, the street yeah. lights went on. My dad would come uh, out and whistle when it got dark yeah. and it was time for food. My dad has a whistle that you could hear from three blocks away. I've and never for, been able to do that. <laughs> for eight years, my dad would come out and whistle when it was time to come home for dinner. Yeah. How many people do that anymore? And I, Even in the smallest of towns, I don't think it happens. It's... It's just not happening. And we're shut into our worlds. We're shut into this world, to our houses. A lot of people yeah. are having agoraphobia. They don't want to go out. Um, it's. I still I still see people wearing masks, COVID masks. Yeah. It's not because they are got a cold that day. They're still scared shitless. Yeah, and we're, we're scared by, you know, we're scared of these things. And people yeah. just need to understand that I think one of the most important things to take from this is there's a difference between public shaming and cancel culture. And cancel culture is never a good thing. I, there is no. not a reason for cancel culture that I can fucking think of, man. Because the majority of the time, you think that you're on a crusade, you're the white knight on his white ho shining horse, and you're coming to save society from this person, and you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And you're going to ruin this person's life because you want to be the white shining example, uh, uh, the knight on the white shining horse, and you're, you're going to save the, everybody you know like that does that that's not gonna happen you're just gonna ruin something you're gonna fuck something up for somebody you know don't ruin somebody's lives over this now listen you guys he was talking to an underage girl and he was yeah. saying things that i don't care what anybody says some of the things he said he was saying them in ways so he could get around, so he doesn't get called out for asking her if she's 17 or 18. Oh, are you 17 or 18? Because if you're 17, it's going to... Oh, that crushes gonna... my work when I was that age. Yeah, that crushes my work on yeah. that age. Oh, would you tell on me if we robbed a house? Like, those type of things, come on, man, mm -hmm. that's wrong. And, yeah. And, well, and you can should be told topic? that's wrong. It's weird. Can I... So there's... I hear the word grooming thrown about, but... There's a lot of grooming that doesn't involve sex. And it's one of the things that I have picked up on just in my hanging out with comic creators. There's a lot of grooming for work in the comic industry. Um, and one of those things, and, and this is a surprise, Brian, so I understand if you want to pull the plug on this halfway through. Um, you're a 30 to 40 year old artist and you need somebody to do your inks uh, cheaper than what your current inker is. And, and you need somebody to do your fill ins um, when you don't. And you're like, Oh God, this 18 year old kid, or let's just say 17 or 16 year old kid, you know, Hey, can I get this? Uh, can I get this kid to work for me really cheap, man? I'm going to, I'm going to give him a few art pages and, and I'm going to I'm going to bring him under my wing and he's going to be my protege. Um, not not sexual at all. Work grooming, uh, if, if, if that's a word. And the comic industry has has allowed a lot of that. Yeah. You know, and these guys, these kids got paid next to nothing in a lot of ways um, to be brought in under other artists to work for cheaper wages until they got too big for them and then they branch off and then they try to get them under their publish they they they, they try it's it's just like the rap industry too let's yeah let's throw diddy into this diddy wanted to get all these people under him so that he could just produce their albums rather than produce a new album every year so then he's producing this guy's album and he gets them under his wing until he puts them on an imprint off of his main album and then you know, on top of that, he's probably trafficking some people to do some favors for those people to keep them on. I, I, I don't know what all the accusations are, but there's a lot of levels of grooming that are acceptable versus this one who is clearly unacceptable. Yeah, back in the day, like 
uh, when I started, uh, you guys, I worked in the um, space and defense engineering industry for 15 years, okay? Uh, You're I literally talk about a this. rocket scientist. Yeah. I ran an engineering lab f um, for space technology. And there is something that happens in the, those industries that was the reason why I fell in love with it. And that's this mentorship that happens between... Older guys in the industry and younger guys. And you get these these things where these older guys, because they have to, they have to take somebody under their wing. And in good situations, it becomes this mentorship thing that is so important in, in certain industries. Now, a lot of times nowadays, these younger generations, these people will think weird things out of it. And it has nothing to well, do with that's, that. That's going to be one of the downsides to this, Brian, is let's just say you are blown away by a 17-year-old girl's artwork. Are you ever going to talk to her after this situation? How many, how many young kids are never going to get talked to by older comic professionals? Yeah, you know, and like, here's nope. the other thing. Hey, you know, I love your portfolio here at the convention, but I never want to talk to you again. Yeah, Bye. Go away. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas Michael Turner, I think, was 16 years old when he got discovered at San Diego. And literally, there was a bidding war at his portfolio review, you know, when he was a kid. This would never happen today. Yeah. And what we call grooming sometimes these days, it might be grooming, but it's not bad. It's not illegal. Like, you throw this word grooming on it. Like, how are we supposed to flirt with people? How are we supposed to find out yeah. if somebody's okay with us? You know, like, there's a big, huge thing going on in the YouTube uh, commentary world where a guy's being canceled for flirting with a girl and tickling her while, when he flirted with her. And she's saying that he sexually assaulted her. He tried to, you know, he thought they were flirting. And, you know, wh what do you do when you're a guy when you're flirting? At least this is how I grew up, right? It starts by talking to each other, laughing, getting that feeling. And then the first kind of move you make as a guy is the you're kind of touching, the, right? You're finding touch a reason the to... the shoulder. Yeah, yeah. 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 The shoulder, yeah, like that. That is how we figure things out, and so many people are so quick to like think that they're going to get this this come up and if they cancel somebody, if they go after somebody, it's this weird thing, man. And it the reason why it's so prevalent is because of these cancel networks, these whisper networks, these cancel culture people. So that, I that saw all they want to do is be on social media and cancel people. They get something I, out of it. I was Facebook friends with a fairly decent indie movie director. And I was friends with him because he was really good friends with my, he was best friends with one of my best friends. And we became Facebook friends and then we became casually chatting back and forth and he went off when me too happened i mean you would have thought this guy was was literally rose mcgowan with a full set of harvey weinstein's fingerprints on her um and i'm like i just shot him a message after about a month or two of just seeing him cancel this guy cancel that guy cancel this guy cancel that guy and i just sent him a message i sent him a facebook message i was like Bro, why are you going so and and literally I think it was who's the who's the guy that um it was uh from Parks and Rec, uh Tom Haddleford. Uh I, I can't pronounce his name. Um Do you know who I'm talking about? No, no, no. I'll chat, look him up. Get, throw it in the chat there. And he got canceled for going on a bad date. Um he he, he the girl came back to his apartment and and blah blah blah, and he had just had a new series, Aziz, Aziz and Sorry. Oh, You're Aziz right. and Sorry. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, yeah. That was so wrong. He had a bad that day. was so he wrong. Was, he was really polite to the girl, and he's like, "Hey, you want to go back to my place?" And oh, oh, have a drink. And he got a little frisky. She, you know, on the couch, and she said, "I can't remember if they actually had sex or if they no, didn't have sex." No, she absolutely the same type of situation. That it seems like there's this happening here. Now I, I say seems, you guys. Yeah, let me let me finish uh, we the don't story. Know. Uh, yeah, I'll find it. Let me it finish right the story. So he's going hard on this Aziz and Sorry um, situation, and I I messaged him just off the off the side. Hey, let's um uh, and 
I'm like, bro, why are you going so hard on this? This is this is a bad date. He's like, dude, every person who gets canceled is me moving up one more spot on the line for getting another piece of work. And I was like, oh my god. And 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 that literally painted my opinion of a lot of the people who were going hard on me too's. Yeah. Was if you cancel somebody on the rung above you, anywhere up the pyramid from you, and it, it back to what I always say, it's always a pyramid scheme. If you can somehow claw someone down and hopefully take their spot, some of these people will. I don't give a fuck. That's kind of where I am. I, I can't take down a fellow comic book retailer uh, just to get a better comic book retailing spot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, here's the other thing. A lot of people are like, yeah, but, you know, he was being led on. And, and no, you know, what if it comes out that he did? There are two people that deserve to be shamed here, right? They both deserve it. They don't, neither of them deserves to be canceled, but they definitely both deserve for us to be like, that's wrong and you shouldn't do that. Uh, Jesse Ed, Smollett is a real thing. And that's where I think a lot of these people who jump the gun on these cancellations need to remember. I'm not saying everybody lies. I'm not saying everybody bends the truth. But there are some people who just make it a 100% up, and you should keep that in mind before you start jumping the gun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, it's It's very interesting. And, you know... We're gonna keep talking about it. We're not gonna. We're gonna try not to talk about it too much tonight because we're gonna have a big special this Thursday where we talk about cancel culture yeah. and the comic book industry. So come hang out with us Thursday night. We're gonna have and a it's special. Real. It, it real. It really is. You know, uh, the Whisper Network is real. Um, somebody from inside of it just put the whole Whisper Network. I think he even did. He even say Whisper Network. Yeah. In the, in the note. Uh, so here's his. If you guys don't know. He put out a um, a four like almost a four page uh, suicide note on Facebook under his Facebook Ed Piscor. It's still up there, and it's this is a ve it's very hard to read. You guys, I'll tell you this, but it, this it's is the something most that should be read. I've ever yes. read. Yes, and he calls people out. Uh, he he calls people out. He he says, um, let's see here if I can find this. He, he names, oh, here we go. Uh, there were so many out there waiting in the wings for something like this to emerge. Daryl A.O. Bright White called it a kill shot. You all got your wish. You were waiting for something to blow out of proportion, and it got served to you on a silver platter. Ramon Villalobos, Camdel Rosario, J.B. Rowe, Molly Wright, congratulations. You got your pound of flesh. Evan Dorkin, I hope skeletons from your closet get revealed someday. Alex DeCampi, may you continue to have zero success no matter how hard you continuously leverage other people's business from your bully pulpit. Um, you know, he, he says that these people... I mean, he literally tells them that I put. I want to put a curse on you. He says, yeah. you know. So, he some, says he's a gypsy. Yeah, he's like, I come from gypsy heritage. I'm going to put a curse on you guys. Yeah. And he names all of them. And here's the interesting yeah. thing, you guys. A lot of people don't know this because they don't follow this, and I understand it, right? There's no reason for people to follow to follow most of this stuff. But a lot of these people are the same three to five people that get named every time a cancellation happens in the comic book industry. And, and the, the funnier part is I usually can't even name a single thing they've ever produced for the industry. I mean, maybe 10% when I'm looking at these names of people who are outspoken about this person being canceled. I'm like, who? Who are you? Why do I have to listen? Why should I listen to you? It wasn't, you weren't the victim. Why are you the one telling me that I need to cancel someone? Up the Down 7 says, no one deserves to be shamed here, McClay. And the fact that you think it's part of the problem, no one knows what actually happened. And there was nothing criminal. It's all gossip and morality. Hey, man, I, again, I said that nobody deserves to be canceled here. But let's be honest, some of those things were weird, and it brings up the reason to say, 
if it's happening, if there's anybody out there that is over the age of 20, over the age, I'll say it, if there's anybody out there that's over the age of 20, don't talk to anybody under the age of 18. If you're a man, an older man that's over the age of 30, don't t- talk to a, a girl under the age of 21 in any type of flirting manner. It's not well, worth it. There was something, I'm not going to bring this up as a huge topic of discussion. There was something in her post um, that I would love to find out more about. She said, my boyfriend encouraged me to continue talking to him. Yes. There you go. And and that was, I'm like, okay, so you didn't tell him you had a boyfriend, but your boyfriend was encouraging you to keep talking to him. Like, to dig a deeper hole, yeah. to maybe... Yeah, she she leverage? deserves she deserves public shame for that too. Like, what are you doing, continuing yeah. to talk to him? It, if like, you felt it was that icky at the time, you should yes. have said, "Whoa, back off, stranger danger, block." Yeah. I don't care how good your comic book is, get out of here. <laughs> I was a fan of Blame It on Rio when I was uh, a teenage boy, but that was about it. What is Blame It on Rio? I've never heard of it. Oh God, uh, Debbie Moore. And it's Michael Caine falls in love with his daughter's um, best Dude, that's friend. the other weird thing. Like, I'm going to be honest. In the past, there were some weird yeah. things when it comes to this. I he mean, was just 17, and yeah. you know what I... That's the Beatles, Does folks. anybody Does anybody out there think that it's okay to have a, uh, a law that says 16 and above? Like, I feel like... I'm not saying that laws should be easy to change but i think society right now is overwhelmingly against anybody under the age of 18 you know t- having sexual relations with somebody older right or, or you know like yeah. if they're 18 and 17 listen you guys i've had a lot of people try to say to me like this happens in high school all the time freshmen dating sophomores and this and that i, I go i get I had that a kid, i had a kid that worked for me who did six months because he was 18 and she was yes. 16 and yes. they went to high school together and that's what i mean by that there's there's nuances but 38 and, the and 17 he, is he, weird he, he, yeah it's well, weird. I think the second year in college, uh, high school girls are, uh, you know, the second year in college, it's it's off limits. How many men out there, how many fathers out there have daughters that are seven, 16, 17, or 18? And do you look at them and do you go that they should be okay to go out there on their own, yet alone have sexual relations with men that are 38 and 40? No, no. these girls are, no. they're not adults yet. They, they, they are not, they are not it's it's just it's weird and anybody out there that says it's okay i'm gonna tell you that i think it's weird i don't care i i I think that an older man putting himself in any situation to get caught up in this for the most part is weird and it shouldn't happen um i think uh, what's the what's the there's an internet rule half your age plus six or something like that it's Uh, just and, and yeah well, and, and you know what? The president of France right now, the president of France, I forget his name, um, but I, I saw a thing on it. He met his wife when she was 39 and she was the theater person when he was 15 in high school. Um, it, it, there's a whole controversy on whether she's a woman or not, but that aside... And, and they're looking the other way. I'm like, wait a second here. He was 15 and she was 39, and that's where their relationship started? If we don't call that shit out, you know? Yeah. It, it, the Here's the other thing. The shame pulpit <laughs> used to be at the local bar or the, the water cooler at work, you know, where everybody would get around and talk and say, hey, you know, this this guy is... Hey, you know, you're doing some fucked up things. You shouldn't be doing this. Hey, you know, you you know that that's where it used to be. It's changed. And now it's a public pulpit in a way that's more public than ever. It's on the internet. It's on social media. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, that's the world we live in. And you, people have to realize that that this again, this isn't for 30 years ago, 20 years ago in the world that we grew up in. 
where the internet wasn't around. This is part of, just like AI is part of our life and we have to deal with it, the what's internet that, is that part that of our life and we have to deal with it. What's that quote from, I think it's Robin Williams when he's talking about uh, what dreams may come. Uh, suicide is a short-term solution to a long-term problem yeah, or something like that. Um, it's heartbreaking. That's, that's kind of, it's, it's heartbreaking that it also came from Robin Williams who yes. didn't see there was any other solution at some, yeah. a certain point in his life. Yeah. <clears throat> Suicide. It's, just, it's sad. It's sad that Ed and anybody that takes their life like that thinks that they don't have somebody that loves them enough to stop them from doing it. Like, well, we've yeah, all, but I'm, we've I, all I, been. I, in... I do agree. Here's the thing, though, and, and I should preface this as well, Brian. And I know it's kind of contrary to. I think suicide should still be an option. I think being able to end your life is. I get almost it. As important. I get it, you know, especially uh, there's, there's nuance, the there's reasons because, for everything. Yes, you're right. I yeah, get that. Uh, somebody who's looking at a six months of solid pain from cancer and there's uh, no me, operability. I get it. I get it. Yeah. You know, show me where the button is. Yes. But for something like this, this is not, no. this is not life ending. No. And it, I just people want people to understand if that he there was, are options. If he was in, truly innocent of this, which... He yeah. prob- it looks like now he said that he didn't have sex. I've seen no proof that he's had no. sex with any underage girl. He f- all I see is that he flirted with one in text messages. That's all I see. Yeah. And well, and the other girl who said the other thing, but that was he, two consenting adults. If he was was truly, you know, not guilty of doing anything wrong, then he should have been standing up and screaming from whatever platform he has. I did not do this, and and this is what I did, and I made a mistake talking to this girl. I shouldn't have talked to her, and I, I won't do it. In the, I, I haven't done it since. I won't do it in the future. I'll be a better person, right? That's what right. should have happened, and it's sad that the depression was so strong that whatever happened, whether it was the cancel culture people coming after him, Jim Rugg turning his back on him, whatever it was that caused him to do this, it's sad. That's the sad part. But no one is above being called out for something that is not right to do, you know. And yeah. and and there again, there is forgiveness for just about everything in this life. There is forgiveness, right? Even people that have had their children taken away from them from murderers have forgiven their murderers. There is place for forgiveness, and there's place for learning and teaching and making a better place. I mean, yeah. I think Pete Townsend is back performing. Yeah, I didn't think I didn't think he was going to survive that. You know, um, Jeffrey Jones uh, just got written out. The father from Beetlejuice and Howard the Duck and a whole bunch. He just got written out of Beetlejuice too. Um, so apparently, that's one of the unforgivable. You know, he's he's. I think he was in every uh, yeah. Tim Burton movie ever until this one. Up the Down 7 says, called out by who? Not right to do? Who determines that? Do the facts matter on either of these two things? They do. And you know who determines that right now? Society. The the community. All of those things determine Well, no, that. no. Let me I'll answer that, though. If, if it was illegal, there are people who get to decide that. Um, it wasn't. So when it wasn't illegal and they knew they weren't going to get a perp walk out of him or a jail time or a, a court case they went after his life they said we're going to make sure fanographic never works I, I guarantee you somebody from fanographics had to have contacted him and said hey ed uh we're, we're done yeah you know um the the gallery got a hold of him um and said, "No, you're you're done." The yeah. people who were going to produce that uh, Switchblade Shorties uh, book, the seventy five thousand dollar advance that he mm-hmm. was going to get, that was when when every single four. And then and then the one place where he thought he was going to have a safe haven, uh, his best friend, his brother. Yeah, I think he calls him a brother. He in calls that him a brother. Letter. Yes. Abby, come here. When he had here. to come out and say that statement, it was heartbreaking. Um, 
Yeah, that and was it. Listen, I, I got I, I keep saying this. I don't think you guys are hearing me. Up the down seven says no way, McClay. You're talking about cancel culture. Nate one thirty eight says agreed. Up the down. I am telling you guys, there's a difference between a public shaming and cancel culture. Saying somebody that is wrong for doing something is not cancel culture. Cancel culture is going after every part of their life to going after his elderly parents. I'm gonna go let my dog out real quick. I'll be right back. But let me. I want to address. Um, including you guys uh, up the down. I made zero statements about Ed Pisker until after I heard what he had done. Um, so yeah, James Gunn. I mean, and he, I, I don't think he was ever accused of, you know, this, but he definitely was accused of making bad jokes. Um, uh, up to down, I just I, I I had a stance on it. Um, when I started seeing the name, and then I did the ten thousand foot view. You might have missed that at the very beginning. I I was just like, this thing needs to work its well way out. I don't. He hadn't made any statements yet. He hadn't said anything. <clears throat> I kind of thought we were going to hear his side of it without it being the last words that came out of his mouth. Public shaming on social media is not cancel culture. Yeah. Saying somebody is is wrong for doing something that is wrong is not cancel culture. Cancel culture is shutting down everything in their life. That yeah. is taking away their way to make money, ta- uh, 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 doxing them, uh, doxing their family, um, turning people, uh, their closest people against them, like that is cancel I, I culture. Guarant- well, I don't guarantee, but it would not surprise me, Brian. Uh, let's just pretend you and I are Jim and Ed, um, just for all intents and purposes. And something happened with me, because more than likely it would happen to me than you. Um, what if all the people that we had lined up for future shows immediately went to you and said, and, and this is a real thing. It's called night letters. Um, if you don't know what that is, look it up. It's little whispers from people like gaslighting you saying, you know, uh, uh, if you don't come out and publicly distance yourself from Dennis, Brian, everyone, I will contact everyone that you have lined up for your show and you will not have a single person on your show from this point forward. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude, it's, it's, it's totally wrong. It's, it's not. Yeah. It's, that's th- here's the thing. Jim was never accused of anything yet. He was used as a tool. Go ahead. Uh, uh, go ahead. I'm just, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to go let my dog out and I can still talk and, and, and everything. Yeah. I apologize you guys. No, 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 no problem. Um, yeah. you know, it, but Jim had to be used as a tool against Ed. Um, and that's, that's part of the cancellation. If we find out there was pressure put on Jim to destroy Ed, that's cancel culture. Yes. That's yes. what that's what Brian is trying to say. He, Jim doesn't come out and say, Ed was stupid. I'm publicly shaming, shaming him. Jim came out and said, because of the allegations, I am reconsidering my work with him. I will not be working professionally with him or whatever, you know, whatever the, what he said. Um, that, that is the difference up to down, uh, making you, making your best friend turn on you. Yeah. Is is what I think Brian is saying. The difference between saying if, if Jim had just come out and said, Ed made a very dumb decision. He is my but I friend. still support him. I still support my friend. It does not change the incredible work he's done. It does not change the content that we've made. It, we are going to take a pause on our TV cartoonist kayfabe. Um, but I am agreeing with the consensus of the public that what he did was wrong. That's a big difference between saying, I will never work with him again. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, we have a perfect example of this. Remember when James Franco got called out? 
And no. Seth, James Franco got me too. Um, he okay. apparently dated several of the girls that he had an acting class in LA. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Several of the girls and um, they they were of age girls, but it was him using his power and influence to sexually, you know, score with them. Seth Rogen. I, I think this is almost the same level of brotherhood. Yes. Seth Rogen came out and said, I'm never going to work with James again. Yeah, I remember that. I, that's where that's immediately, I think, where my loss of respect for him went, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, like, I'm not saying that you have to support your best friend in any yeah. situation. Like yeah. if, 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 if my, if, if I found out my brother was diddling kids and was a habitual sex offender or my best friend was, listen, like <laughs> there's gotta be something done there, but I'm going to yeah. go to my friend and say, I'm going to support you the best I can, but this is wrong. And you have to, there has to be something you have to pay. You have to pay your your dues for this you have to go yeah. into jail you have to you be have to hug under your cactus you have to you hug, have your, to hug cactus. your cactus yes yeah and you have to be better and you have to fix this right yeah. if it can't be fixed then i'm sorry man like I, it's not worth uh having a, yeah. a, a person out there that's yeah. hurting uh the disenfranchised and the disadvantaged and, and yeah. hurting people that can't support themselves like no, absolutely. But the, 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 the main reason, and, and Brian, I'm just going to reiterate this for all the people joining in right now. The main reason Brian and I wanted to have this conversation tonight, this discussion with you guys, was just to explain to everyone, we hope you'll reach out if you ever think that what Ed did was what you want to do, reach out to somebody. Yeah. Reach out, and uh, if nobody is there, just find us on Instagram, find us on Facebook, send us a message. Go on one of my posts and comment. Hey, Dennis, I sent you a message. Uh, yeah. My other comment is Rob Lowe and now um, Robert Downey Jr. There's always something to come back from. There is redemption. There is a thing you have to do to get it. You have to be sorry for what you did. You have to show the world that you're heading for a uh, a different outcome. And the last is build a support. I'll yeah. read, oh, you got it. Okay, you could do that. I didn't know if you could do that or not from your phone. Sorry, <laughs> I was gonna. I was uh, gonna jump in there. Jim, uh, shout out to uh, Mike uh, White Robot says. Jim could have just said, I don't know the truth, but like you, I want to find out the full story and will help rehabilitate him and right any wrongs if necessary. Great, great comment. Thanks yeah. for the $5 super chat yeah, and, thanks, and the Mike. support. I agree. That's a great comment. Yep. So um, there was, you know, again, we're going to get really down and deep into the cancel culture again on Thursday. We're going to talk about it for a pretty long time. So come jump in on that. Um, was there anything else this week that uh, happened industry wise that you want to talk about? Well, I think one of the topics is what we're going to discuss on the cancel culture show on Thursday, but I'm a little disappointed that C2E2 uh, has decided to ban um, Shane Davis John Malin and uh, Ethan Van Skyver. Um, yeah. And I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll be honest. I've been banned from conventions. Um, I was banned. Uh, I'll, I'll share this. One. I don't think I shared this one. I think I might've shared it with you guys in private, but so I'm banned from Motor City Comic Con, uh, my local show. Um, I put on a, well, first of all, I had a fight with the promoter that almost turned into uh, fisticuffs. Um, mm -hmm. We buried the hatchet at uh another convention i but by then i was like yeah i've got to do my own thing here in detroit so i um i did his show again we buried the hatchet uh i announced the day after his show that we had stan lee coming to detroit um he felt a little uh upset six months after his show he said i own michigan uh you're never allowed at any of my shows again sounds like marco uh, from steelavision i've heard he uh he's banned 
Dino from going to any show in Michigan, too, yeah, supposedly. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, oh, okay, I guess I'll just do San Diego, New York, and C2E2 and Mexico. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, I'm good with not going to Detroit. Um, yeah. I was told by a very good friend of ours, Half Price Crook, we were going to go to Baltimore two years ago when I think it was Flipside had that big. Get yeah. Together. Uh -huh. Do you remember yeah. this? Yeah. And so I James, was there. Well, uh, so Half Price Crook's best friend is James, who is yes. security for Mark Nathan. Yep. And uh, he was like, hey, is Dennis's last name Barger? And James is like, or uh, Crook is like, yeah. And uh, he goes, yeah, I got to tell you something, man. Uh, Mark hates him. Um, I'm like, what? Dude, I, I hug Mark every time I see him. He's always coming up to me and like being buddy with me. He goes, yeah, man, he hates your politics. And he said, if you show up, I have to kick you out. Now, I'm not going to do that, but I just wanted to let you know. And I was like, oh, shit, are you fucking kidding me? Now, he's never said anything to me. He's never contacted me. He's never said, Dennis, don't ever come to my show. But he told James... If Dennis shows up, you're kicking him out. And, now, and that, it, it's 100% off of politics and the fact that he's best friends with Mark Wade um, and Mark Wade hates me, whatever. Um, I've been polite to Mark Wade every time I've seen him. I say, hey, he tells me to fuck off. Yeah, that's, you know, and I've talked about this a lot. I don't want... To ever be in a situation like that where, and I, I hope nobody wants to have this happen, where your name gets brought up and somebody goes, that guy's a piece of shit or that guy's this and that. That is something that I don't want. Your reputation is important. And it's important to fight for your reputation too, because there will be people out there that don't like you, that want to, to, to take these steps to act this way. And you have to stand up for your for your reputation. And I wish Ed would have done that. I wish yeah. Ed, you know, would have done what a lot of other people have done in the past couple of years when tapped to him and stand up for themselves. And it's hard to do that. I understand it's hard to do that when you're going through, you know. Well, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, Brian. There's not enough examples of. There's not enough examples of people surviving this and that's why i wanted to remind people rob Lowe, robert downey jr thursday night we're going to have a very interesting show yeah um, i think it's going to be very enlightening i yeah. am a i am a survivor of cancel culture if you want if you want to uh, they dc's tried to cancel me diamonds tried to cancel me uh other publishers have not liked me too much I'm very outspoken. Yeah. Conventions have tried to cancel me. Guess what, bitches? I'm still making money. You can't and, and cancel here's me. The, it, here's the other thing. You know, I've always said on my platform that anybody that I talk about should have the ability to defend themselves. There's an open seat. There is, I'm not going to ban you from the chat because I don't like you. I'm not going to, you yeah. know, you should have a chance to defend yourself. And a perfect example of that is what we do on Drama Alert all the time. I know a lot of people out there are butthurt about Drama Alert, but Drama Alert isn't what you guys think it is. It's not there just to sit there and laugh at people. Now, don't get me wrong. We joke and we have a good time. This is entertainment. But at the same time, if you really watch Drama Report, you will see that I ask questions. I ask questions to find out if this is something that we should really say, hey, this is a problem and we don't like this as a community or this is not right. And a perfect example of that is what happened on Saturday night when we had Kyle Willis on to say, Kyle, this is what we're hearing. Defend yourself. And he did. And he said what he had to say. And we gave him the opportunity to do that. Ed should have had that opportunity. Yeah, and and oh well, actually, my buddy uh, Galaxy Comics of Saginaw, um, but you, Dennis, have the personality to stand up to that. You are the picture of larger than life. You are also in the minority with that ability, but you know as well as I do, I stand up for people all the time. 
yeah you you go after my brother and it's wrong i will stand up for it i've gone on i and i'm unapologetically a friend of ethan van skyvers i've gone on other shows i can't even remember the name of that douchebag show i went on to and defended ethan to the the guy um i think it's, his show disappeared too i don't think anybody watches it anymore um <clears throat> uh Real quick, I want to uh, I want to again explain to everybody why this conversation is taking place tonight, other than the sad uh, suicide of Ed Piscor and everything that went down there. We were supposed to ha originally have uh, uh, Marat Michaels and Travis Noakes comics with Bueller on tonight, and Jesse was supposed to be here. Uh, unfortunately, Jesse is lost in the boonies of Texas without a cell phone. So he, everybody he literally, said, by the way, and it occurred to me, he literally took a wrong turn at Albuquerque. Yes. Yes. And said positive thoughts out there to yeah. Jesse. Get, that get home, get to a hotel safe tonight, Jesse. Get to a hotel safe. And we'll redo the uh, Bueller and Marat Michaels um, interviews when Jesse can be here and you know, thank you for everybody. We just didn't want, we just wanted to continue putting out shows on Tuesday night. So, you know, we continue giving and you guys And we thought that content. this topic was so important that we couldn't miss discussing it. And I hope everybody agrees with us. It's yeah. a good discussion. Even Up the Down doesn't like our, what we're thinking. I, I, I love Up the Down in the chat. Uh, I, I'm always telling you that I love what you're saying, Up yeah. the Down. Um, yeah. And we're just going to disagree on this one. And, and guess what? I hope that doesn't change the fact that we're still going to be friends in the chat next time I'm in the chat. You know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I hope, you know, this isn't the deal breaker. Um, because if it is, then I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry you feel that way. Um, uh, there's people in the chat that are asking about a couple of things um, a little bit uh, off topic that I want to hit on. Let yeah. me uh, get back upstairs here. Well, yeah. And and I'll hit on the I'll hit on the bottom feeder thing uh, while you're talking because that got brought okay. up earlier. Okay. Um, guys, what he was saying, I I honestly we had that conversation between those two creators. One of the creators kept diminishing what the other one was doing without bringing himself to the conversation of what he was used to do, used to. Um. And I thought it was pertinent wrongfully. And like I said, I'll admit this wrongfully. I wanted to make it clear to him that I thought he should know that to a lot of people in the industry, both of them, both of them would be considered bottom feeders because he needed to understand. I thought he needed to understand that he's casting dispersions on the one guy while not taking while not taking responsibility that he also does many of the things on a slightly higher level than what he's doing and i snapped a, there was a lot of frustration with that broadcast as as it was and at the point at which he just wasn't hearing me say yes but yes but yes but I said, you're both bottom feeders. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm sorry I, I snapped like that. But it was part of what Brian was saying was um, was true. I felt that there needed to be a little public shaming uh, for using the cosplay variants um, the way um, – both of the way Sean did and the, the way the James, other guy did. Well, listen, I have James. Uh, we're going to bring James on for a second, uh, or not a second, oh, okay. a couple minutes, um, because he had a big announcement that he announced. Um, listen, both those guys, both James and Sean Hudachko at Comics Elite and James from Mad Loves Comic and Art, are both great guys, great businessmen. Um, you know, I think they're both good for the comic community. Uh, and I can't thank them enough for coming on here. I've had conversations with both of them, um, you know, in person, on the phone. I, I think uh, it was a very important show. And I thank James and Sean for handling that show the way that they did. And both of them, you know, kept their cool and, 
and you know didn't let anything you know cause them to to pop off and and that with, was with uh, that being said also awesome sauce adam i will be on adam's show tomorrow night uh, i believe at nine o'clock put it in the chat there uh adam uh and bottom feeder when i said it about those guys is totally different than what you're thinking, Adam. Don't even <laughs> think about what whatever Adam's thinking when I said bottom feeder. It is not what I'm what I'm thinking. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's great. So, um, but yeah, you know, ultimately we're trying to be better and this and giving you guys good content. That's always my goal. Is you know I want to make it sound the best I can. It look the best I can. Um, bring you the best content and conversation that I can. And I think that we're doing a good job, uh, you know, eight episodes in. So, all right, let's bring on James. James, how you doing, brother? Can you hear us? I'm doing good. Sorry, let me uh, close down what I need to close down. No worries. So, there, you know, we've had a lot of people, um, you know, talk about a something that uh, you released the other day. Um you released a, uh, a social media post and an email that is very interesting. Do you want to talk about this? Uh, yeah. So, you know, stemming from kind of that show that happened a few weeks ago, um, you know, I've always taken an approach of, of the artists come first and, and protecting them. Well, it just so happened that the product that I create that people seem to think um, doesn't have a place in the industry um, have taken to the comment section of artists who are associated with Mad Love. Yes. So that's kind of where I started, where I drew the line and I decided, okay, how can I address this situation? So I sent out that email and, and I worded it in a very specific way. Um, Mad Love's not going anywhere. The artist's portfolio and the art books are done as they are now. So in a few weeks, I will actually, they will be story-based. Uh, because for me, the bullying or the, the, the naysaying or the putting down, the, some of my artists have lost work um, based upon people's opinions on the, on the subject. Um, that's when I kind of draw the line of, okay, I'm not going to stop people's opinions, but is there anything that I can do on my side that can help keep artists from having to experience that? Luckily, the comments were made on a good friend of mine's uh, post that handled the situation beautifully. Um, but that's not to say that the next one wasn't an artist who's new to the game and all of a sudden is discouraged. Um, that's kind of why I decided to switch from what I've been putting out for the last 15 months to kind of changing it up and, and taking away that one one big thing that it seems to be a sticking point for some people. Yeah, I mean, let's let's be honest. I think that this is, uh, I have a lot of respect for you doing this, man. You might not agree with it, but you're you're seeing what people are saying, and instead of saying, uh, you know, this this I'm gonna fight this or this and that, you know, some some things are worth fighting for. But there's also a way to say, okay, how can I make this better? How can I flip this? How can I do something that's different? And these days, just saying, okay, I'm going to give people what they want. I'll give them what they want. I'll just figure out a way to give them what they want. And what they want are for companies like yours and publishers like you to put out sequential art story comic books that's what we want i think that i really think that the quality of comic books these days is so lacking that we want that so much that we we want to hold everybody to that to a standard of that you know um yeah and and, and i'm i'm actually kind of taking the situation and i haven't i was going to wait a couple of weeks before kind of sharing what this first iteration is going to be but it's it's going to be the the musings of Artemis and Brooke. Um, Artemis's nickname is Art. Brooke's nickname is Book. There we go. So it's the musings of Art and Book. Uh, um, I get Art be, Book. Uh, yeah. So you got so you lean into it though. Lean into it. Is um, yeah. it's kind of a mystery 
Science Theater 3000 take on it, where mm -hmm. I still get to highlight the artist's work, but I have Artemis and Brooke lending commentary to the art um, and such and so forth. That's, that's smart. That's a precursor to my storyline coming out in June um, that I have the first two issues being worked on. But I wanted to take, I wanted to marry the idea of an art book and how to add a story to celebrating art by artists. Well, it, so, so Brian, in the chat real quick, before you get, get go through that, um, uh, I don't understand what's going on here from uh, Jasper. I think it was episode six. Was it episode six? Mm -hmm. um, we had James and we had Sean on. No, it was there five, was, I uh, think. A slight online beef that was going on between the two of them, and we wanted to kind of bring them on and and hash it out uh, with Jesse, Brian, and I. And uh, at at a couple times it got contentious, but there was I think there was a lot of back and forth that was actually pretty positive um, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. And because of that, this is uh, you, you put the link down there. Is that yeah? Okay. Yeah, I dropped the link um, for for this for the this uh, post. Oh, okay. Uh, you might want to put the link for episode six in there, too. Um, but uh, James has basically decided, if, if, pardon me if I'm, if I'm wrong here, James, just I'm, I'm trying to paraphrase here for Jasper, that some of the critiques that were made about his work, he is now elaborating on that to turn them more into what we on this The Industry Show suggested which is turning your work into a sequential art or a sequential comic book um, rather than just pages of art. And you were kind of in process of doing that at that time, right? Yeah, I, you know, and, and the, you know, I, we also talked during that show about, you know, the idea of artists, um, you know, working on uh, other series like Vampirella and whatnot. And, be on the lookout in the next month or so. There's there's some stuff coming out that, that has been going on behind the scenes, um, but it really you know I don't I don't I I still have my personal opinions as far as you know art books and the the reason behind what I was doing um, and how it fit. Um, but once it it became you know that's a fight I could fight myself. Um, but once it started affecting you know what could be an artist's mental health or how they perceive it or, or well, how they're you know they're brought into that discussion when you go after people's money and how they support themselves that's the first that's step cancel of cancel culture. culture that is the first and they have step nemesis primes can you read nemesis primes a good friend of the yeah. show and yeah so basically this post on ig is from justin from the comic con podcast aka nemesis prime and um, if you guys don't know, Justin was the first person that we really talked to about Mad Love comics and art, and it had to, it was because of um, the uh, what was the, the uh, um, Afra variant that you guys did was Afra, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doctor Afra, yeah, um, and you know Justin who was on the show uh, a couple weeks ago, and he had mentioned that they were going to do another uh, collab with Mad Love. Um, which they are doing, right? They, they're they dropping. It says here uh, they're going to be doing it. Uh, did it already happen at the uh, King's Con show in New Jersey? I don't That's know. This, this Saturday, okay. Yeah, this Saturday. So um, Justin says, there's definitely a problem with certain retailers and people who think th it's okay with this. Bullying artists and retailers because you have a problem with the difference of opinion. I've had worked... I have had worked with Mad Love's Comics and Art last year on our first ever exclusive cover, something I've never thought was possible. But James saw my love of art and gave us the opportunity to fill that dream. I wish all the best in the future for him and Mad Love Comics and Art. Myself and, Mil myself and Milton the Manimal are dropping a Mad Love collab this Saturday at the King Kong Show in New Jersey. I will reveal it tomorrow, as I don't want people to think this is the April Fool's joke. So let's go take a look at... Uh, that cover. I think he shared it in his story. Or it might be right there in the middle. This one right here? So that one is actually, um, I have the original piece of art. He's a Brazilian artist. And so he sends me all of the originals, which I then, you know, scan and create the digital yeah. the issues. Good. Well, excellent. Is this going to be the last uh, 
last art book you're doing or do you have another one in so the, the one i released monday is the last one that's just my art book exclusive there have been a couple like this one um and there's one for sr comics um that has yet to be announced um I talked to, to the owner and he's like, I don't really want to change the format because I've already done five in the same format. So that's, I think coming out next month. Um, but as far as the format as they are now, those are done other than the ones that the last two, uh, the one for nemesis and, and SR, um, after towards the end of the month, um, the new format will come out and then the, other storyline that I've been working on for the last six months will start coming out in June and hopefully be a monthly, a new story every month. Kick ass, bro. Congrats we, we on that. We do still need to have the conversation about IP, but it, these are all original in the right characters. direction. All Everything, original IP. It's all original characters and the IPs are all, um, I will be only using my IP and going the, uh, the rule of, you know, 60% or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, Artemis, uh, Brooke, and Madison um, are all original characters, original storylines. Um, Madison for Mad Love. See, that's brilliant, though. See, you're a very brilliant guy, James. And well, I'm so I, happy to hear the way you're leaning into it and and making a parody, kind of a pun out of it. It, it, it shows that, you know, you're, you're going to go someplace, and, and that's hopefully going to be up. Well, I, I think I think it really boils down to, and and the thing that just makes me shake my head with people who want to gatekeep whatever part of this industry that happens. This is comic books. This is supposed to be fun. We appreciate and buy and purchase and share and talk about art and stories, and and it it's you know we're not out here pulling dead you know dead bodies back from the front line. We're not you know it's it's a it's a blessing to be a part of something like this, um, and it, it gets sad when when the I, ideologies or the personal opinions of people try to control. Any well, aspect. and there's and there's definitely no reason for this tortious interference where people are contacting your your artists with night letters and 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 such. And it's kind of been the theme of tonight too. You know, it's like, dude, just come out and say you don't like what James is doing. Um, don't be going out as artists and, and trying this little whisper network campaign. Can, can to- I tell you something though, that I, I, I find really amazing. Um, it's happened, it's happened th- three times now in the last couple weeks. Um, and it's, it's funny. It's, it's James. It happened. It's happening with you. It's happened. It happened with Sean who at comics elite it happened with Kyle Willis, you know, ha- being able to have conversations and then what it, what it, for whatever reason sparking some type of thought and like hey you know where kind of where Sean came out and said hey I've been there this is I used to do I was doing things like this that got got me um it got us a, a letter a cease and desist letter sent to me and it scared the shit out of me and I want to reach out to other people and say hey you don't want this to happen to you. And for whatever reason that I, I took respect from that. James, you come on here and you say, Hey, you know, I don't agree with everybody, how everybody thinks and everybody, um, you know, what everybody says about these art books, but I'm not going to let it be a problem for the artists that I love and for the properties that I want to create. So I'm going to do what, what I got to do to, you know, make that happen in the fastest way possible. Kyle Willis, you know, same thing. Kyle Willis, we talk about Kyle Willis and somebody, you know, says, hey, he, you know, maybe he, he he needs to get talk about what's going on. He comes on here. He says, yeah, man, I've stepped over the line a couple of times and I'm not going to do that anymore. And those three things, in light of all this shit with Ed Piscor and all those things that happened, those three, three things have given me, a, given me a lot of hope in uh, the comic book industry and it being better um along with there's great storylines in comic books right now that i love and there it hasn't been that way in a long time and i hope that james what you create will be some of those great storylines that we love and that we're excited about i'll definitely try um i did notice that 
JC asked if I had gotten any letter from any IP holder, and I have not. Okay, good. It's good. definitely not a a legal reason for the switch. It's it's definitely um, well know, and. How did be Can I, I'll, I'll tell a story. I don't think I, I told this at all uh, after the whole acetate gate. And, and, and this is, it's totally apples and pineapples. Um, so after acetate gate, probably I think on Saturday or Sunday, I sent a, a nice little email to one of my friends over at Marble. And I was like, hey, can I take uh, and staple some acetate to all my variants and make new variants out of them? And I, I made it for one of, uh, I think it was It's Drunken Chat, where I put Donald Trump over yeah, yeah. Uh, Barack Obama. And, uh, and they prompt, it prompted Marvel to immediately Monday morning to release that email to um, all retailers who have ever done variant covers with them that this is not a practice that will allow you to ever do another variant with us. Yeah. End of story. And, and that's, that's the proper way to do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, but, you know, well, it wasn't like... Uh, a lot of retailers have contracts with Diamond, and those contracts with Diamond are, you know, a, 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 that's a big thing. That's a big deal, and it holds you to some standards. And I think it was, I think it was Steve last week or Jesse where we were talking about, look, you can't do handshake deals. You have to do contracts. Yeah. Um, I know we've had that discussion. It's it's you know we got to put stuff in writing and and there's got to be paper trails and yeah and whatnot. You know? Well, I want to I want to let James go here, but I want to say to him thank you, man. I appreciate you for coming on this channel and talking with and us. There's, and, there's and one last thing I want to I think I brought this up in that last show episode six is you know I in light of this and and you know going back a few weeks is how can we be better? That's just you know yeah. in in all walks of life. But, you know, especially in light of recent things is how as an industry or as a retailer, as a publisher, as a customer, as a follower, as a fan, how can we be better? That's just kind of what I'm always trying to look at. Well, I think you're doing it in a big way, man. So and I just want to say you. I appreciate you in the chat saying that you don't hold a grudge against me. So oh, of course uh, not. Know. No, it was it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's it's funny. One of the things and I've actually kind of taken it as a mantra. I think you referred to me as kind of like the. The, the low end prostitute. Well, the funny thing is, <laughs> I'm still getting laid and I'm still getting paid. So Amen. It's okay. <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen. Hey, you guys, Thanks, go guys. support James uh, and it. and whatever he does in the future. And James, we're gonna uh, continue to have you on the show and the channel, and we're gonna continue to support you as uh, you continue to do good things in comics, man. Appreciate it, guys. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Later. Man, that's good shit right there, bro. That's that's right there. You know, and, and and I took a lot of I took a lot of flack, and and that's why I wanted to apologize tonight because it's still popping up in the chats. Um, and yeah. but that's you know, uh, there's a there's a line from one of my favorite movies, Patton, and Patton slapped a, a private for being a coward in the uh, in the the medical tent, mm -hmm. and he had to come out there and apologize, and. Uh, I, I, I love Patton. Um, if if anything, I believe I was reincarnated from Patton at some point. It, <laughs> you know, you know what? What are you going to do? Um, but he says in his apology, "I thought by slapping that soldier, I would put some humility into him and let him see what real bravery was." And not that I said bottom feeder because of that moment in time. But that's where it was coming from. I wanted I, Sean was going really hard on James, and he just wasn't understanding what I was trying to say for every what for every you were Sean trying to put down. James, yeah, I think what? you know uh, what you were trying to put down. He wasn't. He yeah. Wasn't, uh, oh, but, I did it wrong. I did it completely wrong. Well, I think I think the problem with that was you came in late and you didn't hear mm -hmm. all the first part where Sean explained. You know that. Right, how he no, had, absolutely. yeah, but hey, that's why we have these shows. That's why I love, like, th thank God for Joe Rogan and the people who started the long form, you know, podcast, long form conversation stuff. It's so important to, um, in my opinion, changing the 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 thought process, the the quick, you know, uh, everything's black yeah. and white thought process. You know, well, you know, we were able to to kind of uh, when when the like I said, I didn't know ed pisker from anyone 
uh, two days ago. I just remembered the name. Hip Hop Family Tree. Uh, Red Room. Um, Grand Desi- uh, the X-Men Grand, Grand Design. Design. Those, those were literally the only things I knew. I had no idea he was involved with uh, Harvey P. P. Carr and American Splendor. Yep. You know? Um, so when, when I heard Ethan reading that note, I, literally my soul was just crushing listening to every word. Yeah, it's hard to read. And, and when I went back over it again and hearing other people's takes on it and, yeah. and you and I talking... And I just felt like we had to have this discussion because I needed it. I yeah. needed it as much as I wish Ed would have gotten it from somebody else. Yeah. And I appreciate you allowing us to go on and have this conversation tonight, Brian. Oh, yeah. Well, you guys, we are, uh, we're going to end the show. And, but before we do, um, I want to end it by playing a video. We were, I, I was very lucky to um, get the opportunity to have Rob Liefeld on the channel uh, last week. It was an amazing moment for me, an amazing moment for the channel, and I hope uh, in the future Rob will come back and hang out with us again on this channel. He put out a video that I just want to play, and uh, that's what we're going to do. So, here we go. So we're just going to play it out with them? Yep. Listen up, guys. This is from the Rod Father. This is Ed Piscor. Ed was a talented, successful cartoonist. Uh, His biggest claim to fame was probably Hip Hop Family Tree, which was really cool. I got to know Ed because he expressed uh, that he had been uh, into my work when he was a kid. And... He had a cool way about him. I really enjoyed Ed. I talked to him on and off for the last decade and he had me on his show. Uh, he had a comic book show that he, uh, that he hosted and, uh, Ed's gone. Ed took his life today. And the thing that I can't get over is he writes, he starts off and he says, he uh, he said he was sorry. But he says, I don't know what happened with Ed Piscor. I don't know what happened. Uh, he suddenly it was in the eye of the storm. Uh, a bunch of allegations and uh, seemed like there was a judgment that came as they often do before Maybe everything could be vetted, but I'm going to say again, I don't know everything. What I know is Ed is gone. Ed took his own life. Uh, he's part of our comic book community. He went from hip hop family tree to making uh, X-Men comics for Marvel. And he loved comics. And I found him, I found his passion for comics to be sincere and uh, inspiring. Ed says, I was murdered by internet bullies. I was murdered by internet bullies. Massive amounts of them. Some of you out there absolutely contributed to my death as you entertained yourself with gossip about me. I wasn't AI. I was a real human being. You chipped little bits of my self-esteem away all week until I vaporized. He said, uh, he said, I hope it makes people think twice about joining in an internet feeding frenzy. Why am I here talking to you about Ed Piscor? We got to be better than this. Ed, it's, uh, I'm going to tell you what I tell my kids all the time. I'm so thankful that I didn't grow up with the internet and the bullying. I would have been mocked and made fun of. I am certain of it. And I, what, what kids go through nowadays, what adults go through, being dragged, being uh, just, as, as, as Ed said, vaporized. 
It's uh, it's brutal. Ed's gone. Ed Piscor took his own life because he just, uh, what it comes down to, he he. Not many people can make it to the other side of of the of the. He said, "I disappointed so many people." So, I just think internet bullying is. Uh, we've got to reevaluate this, and we've got to take a different. We've got to really think twice. Uh, think about what it, I was murdered by internet bullies. He couldn't take it. It broke him. It broke him, and his result. Parents have lost a son, a sister has lost, lost a brother, the industry lost a genuine talent. And uh, whatever mistakes he made, people make mistakes. People make mistakes. What we need to be better at is giving grace to people and not judgment, but giving grace. Maybe none of this makes sense, but I, I think uh, I have just shocked that Ed is gone and that he took his own life and uh, that I won't interact with him again and uh, rest in peace Ed and I, I can only hope that there is some change to, to, to come of this.